While teaching online using Vinkle Hall, you may find that you need to set up quizzes. Vinkle Hall offers a very robust quiz making tool that allows you to adjust many settings such as deadlines, time limit, number of attempts, in addition to many different question types such as short answer, multiple choice, essay questions, true false, and the list goes on. This video will cover a number of topics. The video description found below provides timestamps for each topic so that you can more easily skip to the sections you need. Topics covered will include how to add a quiz and adjust the settings, question types and how to add questions, and grading considerations. Let's begin. How to add a quiz and adjust quiz settings. When adding a quiz, the first thing you will need to do is turn editing on in your course using the gear icon in the upper right hand corner. Select turn editing on. Then you will locate the section of your course where you want to add the quiz. And then click on add an activity or resource. From this window, you will need to scroll down, select quiz and click add. The first step is to name the quiz. Once you've done that, you will move on to the other settings. Many of the default quiz settings are perfectly fine to use and some of them we recommend against changing. The following settings that I'm going to go over are the most frequently used settings and will allow you to adjust your quiz in a way that suits your needs. The first setting we're going to look at is timing. The timing settings will allow you to adjust when your quiz opens, when your quiz closes, and how long students have to take the quiz once they begin. You may want to adjust your quiz so that it opens at a certain time so students cannot access it before this date. In this case, you would check the box by enable, pick the date you want your quiz to open. You may want the quiz to close at a certain date. For example, if the quiz starts on March 17th, you may want to give students a week to take the quiz. For this, you would click on the checkbox next to Enable, and then you would select from the drop-down menu the day that you want the quiz to close. You can also adjust the time that the quiz opens. Um, many people leave the time for opening the quiz alone, but they close the quiz at midnight. In Vanco Hall, it is on a 24-hour clock, so midnight would be 23.59. The next setting to consider is the time limit. This is what dictates how long your students have to take the quiz once they begin. To enable this, you will check the checkbox next to Enable, and then you will choose how many minutes your students have to take the quiz. The next setting below, when time expires, please leave the default open attempts are submitted automatically. The next settings to consider are grade. Grade category indicates where this quiz will be itemized inside of your gradebook. So if you have set your gradebook up to have weighted categories, you will select this drop down menu and put the quiz in the correct category. You can leave the grade to pass blank Attempts allowed will dictate how many times the student can attempt the quiz. Many people leave this at one, but you can give them two attempts if you choose to, and the grading method can be left at the default. The next settings you may want to look at are question behavior. You may want to change shuffle within questions. It's default as no, but if you change to yes, that means for multiple choice questions, answers A, B, C, and D, will be in a different order for each student. The next settings to consider are review options. These settings dictate what the student is able to do after they've taken their quiz. Many people will uncheck the boxes for immediately after the attempt, and you can uncheck all of them by clicking just the attempt. They will do the same for later while the quiz is still open, and then leave after the quiz is closed as the default settings. The reason for adjusting immediately after the attempt and later while the quiz is still open is so that students who've taken the quiz already cannot go back into the quiz and view the questions and the correct answers and share them with their friends. 
This is really a cheating preventative, so consider what you would like to do with these settings. All other settings that we did not go over can be left as the default. What you will do now is click Save and Display. In this section of the video, we will go over question types and adding questions. After you have added a quiz to your Vanko Hall course, you will need to add questions. To do this, you will click on the quiz and then click on Edit Quiz. The next page will look like this and you will click on the Add button on the right hand side. In general, you will be adding a new question. Something to note is that some publishers will offer question banks that go along with their textbooks. If you have one of these question banks, feel free to contact the help desk to see if we are able to import the questions into Moodle. A consideration, however, is that not all question banks are formatted to be used with Vanco Hall. When you're adding questions, you will click on a new question. In the pop-up box, you'll see a variety of different question types that you can add. There are a few that are used frequently for many classes. These include the essay question, multiple choice questions, short answer, and true or false. Be careful when you're setting up multiple choice questions that you do not select all or nothing if that's not the kind that you want to use. You probably want just regular multiple choice. If you have any questions about the other question types, you can click on them and on the right hand side you'll get a definition of what the question type is and how it's used. So you can do that for any of the question types. For this example, we're going to add a multiple choice question. You'll select the question type and then click add. For a multiple choice question, you'll add the question name. It doesn't really matter what this is, just something for you. The students won't see it. You'll add the question text. And then you'll scroll down. And in this area is where you will add the answers. So you will add choice one. Since this answer is correct for grade, I select 100%. Choice three, and then so on. You can add as many options as you like. And when you've done that, you will click on Save Changes at the bottom. You've now added one question to your quiz. As you can see, it is a multiple choice question. I'm going to demonstrate how to add a true false question. But if you would like to skip ahead to learn more about grading considerations, then see the video description for the timestamp for where you need to skip to. To add a true or false question to your quiz, again, you will click Add. Click a new question. From here, you will select True or False and click Add. Again, the question name doesn't really matter. It's just something for you. You'll add the question text. You will scroll down. And in this area for correct answer, you will select true or false. In this case, the correct answer is false. Scroll down and click Save Changes. Now you can see that two questions have been added to the quiz. Continue adding questions in this manner. If you would like to shuffle the questions so that each student has a different test with the same questions but in a different order, check this box here. To change the grading schematics of the quiz, you will change the maximum grade here, out of 10, out of 100, whatever you would like. In this section of the video, we will go over some grading considerations. Keep it simple. By this, I mean keep the settings for your quizzes simple. Adjust what you need to adjust, but many of the defaults are fine. Add questions that you're comfortable with. And again, keep it simple. Essay and short answer questions will need to be manually graded. So, if you have an essay or a short answer question in your quiz, your students won't be able to see what they have gotten as a grade on the quiz until you go in and manually grade these items. Time limits on attempts. Time limits are a really good way to mitigate cheating 
by putting a cap on the amount of time a student can spend on the quiz. Once they start the quiz and they open it on their side of things in Vanco Hall, there's no way to pause the timer. So from the time they open the quiz, they have whatever time limit you set to complete the quiz. This makes it difficult for them to use their books or refer to notes while they're completing the quiz. Once your students have taken the quiz, you'll be able to click into it and then click on the small link here where it says attempts and in this case, 32 students have attempted the quiz. Clicking on this link will bring you to an overview of every single student in your class, the attempts that they took on the quiz, how long they spent on the quiz, and what questions they got wrong or what questions they got right. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach us by contacting the SUNY Delhi Help Desk at helpdesk at delhi.edu or by phone at 607-746-4835.